Hi everyone and thank you for joining me. My name is Yanis and I'm a Solutions Engineer Stream Native and in this video we'll see together how you can actually integrate Patch Pulsar with the Google Cloud Storage in order to offload your data and then not be queried on top so we can query them. And uh, we'll take a problem solution approach and for that what we will implement it is uh, this simple streaming data pipeline over here. So imagine that uh, your boss comes and says to you, you know what, we have these uh, CSV files sitting on our file system and basically we want to ingest those into some kind of pulsar topic, uh, raw as they are string records, then apply some transformation function using pulsar functions so we can pass the event from a string into some kind of object, write it uh, as JSON and another output topic and finally offload it into Google Cloud Storage in a parquet format and then not be query on top so we can query our data. And so first of all we have here our events uh, CSV file that uh, if I make this a little bit bigger we have around uh, 50,000 records uh, and we want to exclude these headers here and we are going to write uh, these lines as they are inside the pulsar topic which we will call a raw events as we can see here and uh, I, we're going to be using this events producer here that basically first uses this uh, helper class ingesting utils to load uh, this data file uh, load all the records from the file and then we will instantiate the pulsar client using this init, par, uh, init pulsar client method here and create the producer that produces string records and for every message that's going to be pretty much a string line just write it inside the topic and so at this point we will be having our data inside our raw events topic here and then we want to apply a pulsar function that we will call event pulsar func and this basically accepts uh, an input string line for, from our raw events topic parses it, uses this line to event helper function that I have provided for you and you can find all the source code on github and uh, pretty much it just parses the line and creates a new events object that we uh, propagate forward uh, inside uh, this topic here called parsed events and from there we will deploy our cloud uh, storage connector we will be using the cloud storage sync connector for pulsar which is located under the stream native repo and uh, I have also I included here the NAR file that contains the code for the connector if you want to reference it uh, faster and uh, then we will start BigQuery and so right here on Google Cloud you can see that I have created this events packet that we will use for our demo and for pulsar function here I have also added this uh, configuration file which is some basic configurations for the function as well as uh, the ones here for the GCS sync connector actually let me actually let me just check something um, if I go to my bucket here uh, I need to provide my credentials so let me just add them And so right now, let's actually go and see how we can implement this uh, streaming data pipeline. So the first thing we need, uh, if you go here and under the readme, you will see that we will need the Pulsar cluster, uh, sorry, Kubernetes cluster to run our code. And let me actually get access to my Kubernetes cluster. And uh, yeah, at this point, we have nothing on, the, on our cluster. So we will create this demo namespace uh, inside which we will deploy our Pulsar cluster. And uh, I have also provided for you, we will be using the Helm charts to deploy the cluster. And so I have provided this values uh, file here and it basically is going to deploy three zookeeper instances three bookkeeper instances i have uh, tweaked a little bit also the memory settings uh, two broker instances and our 
proxy, I'm also tweeting the uh, net buffer size in order to have enough space to upload this charge here because everything goes through the proxy. And uh, with these things in place, let's go and actually deploy our cluster. I'm going to run this command here while in this screen, in this terminal, I will be monitoring my pods as they come up. And I have provided also some helper scripts here so you can deploy everything uh, easily. You can see that we have our Pulsar cluster up and running. And the first thing we want to do is actually go, um, I mean, we have our Pulsar function here. So we want to create, uh, to package our code so we can deploy it. And the first thing here, I have this setup script that creates some folders under the, on the toolset pod that has been deployed here. Actually, let me also execute the script as I'm um, waiting for the cluster. And uh, then uh, actually it builds the project, as you can see here, using the Maven clean package command, uh, creates some folders, and then basically it grabs um, from our target directory here that is going to generate our jar file. It copies it under the, on the toolset pod under the my jars folder here. Also uploads this, the connector NAR file from here under, on uh, the toolset pod on the connector folder and also grabs these configuration files and uploads them as well. So why I, why I wait for my cluster to start and all the resources to get uploaded, I'm going to pause for a little bit because my internet connection is not the best, so it's going to take uh, a little time and come back to you. Okay, so we're back and as you can see, all of my resources have been successfully uploaded on the cluster and they, they are uploaded on the toolset pod here and my cluster is running. So let's grab a terminal in the toolset pod to see what we have actually uploaded there. And if you remember the NAR file for the connector is, uh, this is the name for it. And so right here I have my connector folder. And if I do a grab on the cloud, you can see we have our connector inside there. And we also have this my charge folder. And if I check inside this directory, I have my example char that contains the source code for my Pulsar function. And lastly, we also have this config folder here that contains uh, these two configuration files for the GCS sync as well as the function. And so let's go also take a look at the GCS sync uh, configuration file. And as you can see here, we provide the, co the connection uh, details for Google Cloud. Uh, you need to replace the fields here your, with your own credentials. You specify the packet name and the region and some other properties. And with these things in place now, we are ready to actually deploy everything. So I have provided here this deploy shell script that basically inside the tool support runs this pulse routing sync create command in order to create our sync, uh, make sure we have it has been successfully deployed by getting some stats, so the status, and finally we'll also deploy our pulse function. So let me go here and actually deploy everything. And we need to wait a little bit for that. You can see that our connector uh, has started already running. And let's also wait a little bit for the pulsar function to come up. We can see that we, ha we can view our uh, connector. This output here provides some stats for it. And let's also wait for the pulsar function to start. And it's run here. <clears throat> so first, let's check the connector logs to see if we have any issues there. And we check the logs using this command and the minus flag uh, indicates that we want to follow the logs. Yeah, everything has started successfully. And let's do the same for the, par the parser function. 
and let's check the logs and the function has started as well so at this point uh, we have everything set up and we want to start and set some data so we will be using this event producer here and in order for that producer to be able to connect to my cluster I need to expose the necessary ports because I don't use some kind of ingress at this point so if we get the services we have for the pulsar cluster you can see that we have this proxy here and uses this is the pulsar admin port and the broker port so let's do a port forwarding so we can access it from our local host and we can do so by running this command where we provide the service name and the ports we want to expose and at this point uh, we are ready to start running our producer to generate some data and uh, let me just run this and if you remember from here we have like 50,000 records inside this file minus the header so this is the, the number of records we expect to see in, big, uh, in the Google Cloud Storage as well. So let's wait until everything uh, gets written. So, <clears throat> so with everything in place it has stopped now. So if I go here now on my Google Cloud Storage on my bucket and to refresh this page you can see we have our data here and basically here we see the tenant uh, name as a first folder then we proceed and see the namespace this is what Pulsar uses to, uh, to generate the folders here this is the topic name and inside here we can see that everything uh, is partitioned uh, using the date because we have specified here uh, that we want to partition based on the time and inside here you can see that we have five parquet files and the reason we have five files is because we have specified that the batch size we want to be like uh, 10,000 and so we have uh, almost uh, 50,000 records so, so this means five batches in general you want to be a little bit careful uh, when you deal with streaming data and you write uh, parquet files because you want to end up with uh, too many small files so you need to configure it uh, based on uh, your requirements and with our files here let's also now go to BigQuery and I'm going to create a data set here let's give it an ID of demo and I think we're good here and right now I'm going to create a new table uh, let's call this table events and I'm going to use as a source the Google Cloud Storage and if I browse here on my files, you can see my packet. And right here, we ha I have all my files. And let's grab everything. And let's create a table. And you can see that we have successfully, uh, our table has been created successfully. And if we go into the query here, let me create a new tab and select all the records. We should see around uh, 50,000 records minus the header. And yes, all of our data has been uh, ingested successfully. And uh, right now you have access to your data and you can run uh, all sorts of queries. You want to extract some meaningful insights that make sense to you. So let's say here, for example, we might want to uh, filter, uh, let's say that we want the event type to be a uh, purchase, to see how many purchases we had so far. And we can see that all the event types here are of, are of kind purchase. So I hope this is useful to you and uh, thank you for being here with me. Thank you.